This video will go through graphing trig functions using our TI-83 Plus calculator. We'll show both sine and cosine, as well as our tangent functions. There's a few new buttons we're going to need to use on our calculator. Hopefully you're familiar with these from graphing other types of functions, such as linear functions or quadratic functions. But as a refresher, we'll need the Y equal button and the graph button in order to enter in graphs and to actually draw the graphs. We'll also be using the zoom button, and we'll be using the zoom button a little differently than you have for other types of functions. We'll also need to use the variable button, or at least that's what I call it. It's the one that's labeled x, t, theta, and n. And of course, we'll still have to use our sine, cosine, and tangent buttons, as well as remember how to use that pi button whenever we're graphing trig functions. Let's first look at something simple, such as sine of x. To graph sine of x, we'll go and hit y equals, and if there was information here, all I would have to do is hit my clear button, and I'll go ahead and press sine, and then my x, t, theta, n button, or my variable button, and n parentheses, and then I'll hit graph. And there is my basic sine function. Well, it's my sine function, but quite frankly, it's a little bit small, and I'm not quite sure how many periods I'm looking at there. So what I'm going to do is use the zoom button. And I'm going to use this Z trig button. And what that will do is that will give me a good look in terms of Y, in terms of my maximum value and my minimum value. And in terms of my X, it will make my window such that I see exactly two complete cycles of my trig function because that's a good thing to look at when we're trying to graph these functions. And that's all there is to it. Again, we use that zoom and z trig in order to show our two complete cycles of our trigonometric function. Let's look at something like f of x is equal to negative cosine of x. Remember, if we multiply our sine or cosine by a negative one, what that did was reflect our sine and cosine over our x-axis. So let's see if this works. If I hit my y equals button again, and now I'm going to hit my negation button, and then cosine, and then my variable button, and my close parentheses, and I'll go ahead and graph that, then I'll see, yes, in fact, this is my basic cosine function, but it's now reflected over that x-axis. Now let's also look at tangent of x. When we did the transformations, we focused on sine and cosine, but we can also look at graphing tangent. Let's clear that out, and we'll go ahead and graph tangent of x. When I hit graph, we remember that tangent had those points of disjoint, where it went from positive infinity to negative infinity. Now, if you notice, it almost looks like the function has a value that it's equal to at this point, because we see this line here. But that's only because if we click on mode, see my calculator's in connected mode. What this does is it connects the dots. When it graphs a function, it will calculate a bunch of different points and just connect those dots. Well, if I leave it as a dot, then it won't draw a line between my two dots. Hit enter, and then it no longer looks like it's actually equal to a value at those points. We can even do something crazy like add sines and cosines together. For instance, if I had a function sine x plus cosine of 5x, we could find out what this trig function looked like using our calculator. All I would do is type in sine x, being very sure to close my parentheses because I want to add to that cosine of 5x. Again, I'll close my parentheses and hit graph, and now we see something absolutely crazy, but a lot of real-life applications might involve adding two different sine or cosine functions together. And we can find out what they would look like by using our calculator. And there we have graphing trig functions on our TI-83 Plus calculator. We've graphed sine, cosine, and tangent, as well as adding sine and cosine functions together.